welcome the California Golden Bears, Coach Lindy, Lindsey Gottlieb, Laisha Clarendon, and Rashawn DeGray. Coach, I will let you open and then we'll take questions and a media reminder to please identify yourself and your outlet before questions. Um, thanks, uh, all of you, for being here and, and covering us. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is congratulate <coughs> Stanford. Um, such a such a terrific basketball program. They do things the right way. They have great players. They're well coached, uh, and, and they deserve obviously uh, this Pac-12 championship tonight. You know, I've said I've said to anyone who listened recently that the more film I watch, uh, the more impressed I am with with Chine and Neka. I think they might be the best front court ever in terms of what they relied on to do, and that was before Neka started hitting threes from 30 feet. Um, uh, so obviously, all credit to them. We wish them well in the NCAA tournament. The second thing is I'd like to thank the Pac-12. Uh, this has been a first-class event, and, and I really wanted um, our young women to, to come into this championship game, which is, is something you earn, and you don't get that opportunity very well, and really compete uh, and give ourselves a chance to win and cut down nets. And, and I couldn't be more proud of our effort today. Um, I, I thought that we did that. Um, I, I think we represented ourselves and our university well. I have really um, passionate players and talented players, and they're disappointed because they want to win, and we didn't come here for second place. Um, but I think the future of our program is bright. I think we've got a really exciting couple weeks in front of us, and, and I know this group is going to be back here, um, and, and maybe we can do some, uh, some real special things um, down the road. So we, we, we leave with our heads really high. Thank you, Coach. Michelle Smith. Michelle Smith, ESPW. Lindsay, can we talk about neck in the face-up game? I mean, there were the threes, but then there were also a few shots that were just probably inside the line. Talk about, did you expect that from her? It's, she's been hinting toward that, but really sure. she brought this out kind of big guns today. Yeah, um, as just such a basketball junkie, I've been following for years. I mean, I, I have it, uh, we played them in the, the NCAA tournament my first, her freshman year, my first year at Santa Barbara, and obviously just been watching since. And the thing that's so impressive about someone that talented, she's has kept improving every single year. And obviously this year, you know, her, her face-up game has been really dynamic all along. And that allows Tara to do some things with her. I mean, the first game at Maples, we got hit on that ball screen on the perimeter. And then now we learned, you know, to switch that and take that away. And now they're bringing off her stagger screens um, and almost playing her at the three when they had uh, Tinkle and, and, and Shanae in there. So um, I, I think uh, when you have the combination of sort of ridiculous athleticism, skill, and then a will to get better, um, it's just a credit to her, and then obviously her coaching staff that puts her in position to take away mismatches. I think it also speaks to their respect for our post game that they know their best sort of weapon with her against us is to face her up a little bit, maybe against you know somebody else who leave on the block all game. It's a nice you know option to have either way. Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle. Lindsay, I know you are a basketball junkie. I'm curious about something. Uh, ESPN and a lot of other people seem to have anointed Brittany Griner as the player of the year in the, in the United States. What do you think of, uh, of NECA's chances of being the player of the year? I mean, I think if there's no Brittany Griner, it's a runaway, no question about it. I mean, obviously the three of them suck matter, Elena Delzon, NECA, and, and Brittany Griner. And it's so interesting because they're all really different. They're all incredibly valuable to their teams. They all have winning teams, and then they're all transcendent in terms of their abilities. So it's a, it's a pretty neat year for women's basketball in that sense. Um, you know, having faced NECA all these times, it's, it's hard to say there's anyone better, but I, I also think Brittany Griner changes the game of basketball and, um, you know, on the defensive end and the offensive end. So that's a really difficult um, question. Uh, so maybe I would split my vote through it. <laughs> Nick Hamilton, TG Sports. Coach, what do you feel you're going to need to get over the hump to be back on the championship side next year? Um, we can be a lot better, which is which is fun. It's it's encouraging. Um, the first thing is, you know, obviously, you know, sometimes we miss free throws and sometimes we turn the ball over. And I think the more chances we give ourselves, um, you know, to put points on the board, the better we're going to be. We, we can play in that tempo. Uh, Stanford's a particularly tough matchup for us because we score through the post so much. And we um, have an advantage there, and it kind of negates that a little bit for us. But I think as our players um, uh, mature a little bit um, and, and, and take that next step, I think our competitive um, fire is, is there. It's at an elite level. I think our depth and our versatility is at an elite level. Um, and I think the, the next step, talking about being top 10 teams, is kind of having all that come together on a consistent basis um, and maybe uh, shoring up some of our, of our weaknesses. For either one of the players, can you just talk about 
Sunday's last Sunday's game in relation to today and did you guys were you guys able to put that away and or did any of that carry over? Um, <laughs> we definitely had to put it away. I mean, we wouldn't have got to where we were today. I think we kind of put it in the back of our minds, stored it in our bank a little bit um, as we went through the tournament, knowing you know we got to be Colorado, but we want to get Stanford, we got to beat uh, Washington State, we want to get back to Stanford and just get this chance. And um, I think the biggest difference was just our fight and our toughness, and just knowing that we're going out with the fight, we're going out no matter what, we're going to hang our heads high. I don't think we could hang our heads that high after that game last Sunday. We kind of knew we just didn't bring it all. So um, we just brought all we could, and, you know, that's the way it goes. Oh, they just, Jeff Ferrado will contribute. Can you talk about the disappointing start you guys had? They jumped on you 17-4, to 4 and it's about the final march in the game. You're pretty competitive after that, but it put you in a hole. How exactly do they score? How are they scoring? They made a lot of shots early. I mean, we talked about getting stops because I thought well, we could get stops. We could play the way we want to play, and we just didn't get enough stops early. I think anytime you put yourself in a hole, it's hard to um, dig yourself out. Even if you play even, you know you already put yourself down. Um, so that was a tough start, but uh, we fought back. Hard, so. And the thing I, I, I'm proud of is that if you look at kind of the toughness categories, right, we had 23 offensive rebounds. Um, we went to the free throw line 25 times. Um, and and I think it took a, they had a, just an unbelievable superhuman performance from a, from a player. And the rest of them played the roles, and that's what they do so well um, in their program. Um, but we just, we thought the key was stops. We just didn't get any stops at Austin. I felt like... Uh, today, we really wanted to focus on that because we, we thought if we could grind it out on the defensive end, we could play the way we want to play on the offensive end and get enough stops. Right. Some more silks from full court. Rashonda, coach, can you, you talk about the, this wall that they built in the, in the paint? I mean, Rashonda, you were going against it all day. And, and 23 offensive rebounds, you didn't get a lot out of it. Um, but you stayed in character. You always talk about being in character. You guys, you know, got in there and in the paint, but it just, just didn't pay off. We just have to do it like because he hit three. We just have to be strong and like not worry about any cause or anything. Just do us and do what we do best. And we made a conscious effort. You know, we. I, I don't think in the other two games we made them work hard enough on defense. I mean, we didn't want to be afraid of getting the ball inside, and um, they do a good job. I mean, I think Shane, I can know they can't foul. They can't because they rely on them so much. And so they do a good job of staying straight up. Uh, you know, they allow a lot of contact sometimes, um, and, and our players are just sort of used to sometimes having an advantage because we, we do against, I don't know, 95% of teams in the, in the country inside. And um, I, I think that's really where you'll see our growth and development. Um, we have young post players that, that are so talented, and they're just continually adding pieces to their game. Uh, and, and you got to do some things differently when you when you have those two in there. Um, so again, I credit their defensive effort. We knew to beat them, we had to get easy post touches where we could, probably in transition, and then we had to hit those shots from the outside. This question is for the players. Um, at the end of the game, in particular, um, you two were especially energetic, and there was a lot of energy from the bench too. As far as we can do it, comments like we can do it, let's go, let's go, and you guys never gave up one time. Where does that come from? Um, just us, like just us being together, like we're being a family, like we have our hands down low, we pick each other up, and it's not the end for us, like we still got the dance, and we're still going to go dance, so we just got to get us strong. <laughs> and I mean, if you watch this play all year, I was still believing with the last three minutes, you know, you've seen us come back, Ohio State, um, Stanford the first time, so I was still like, we just need something, something to get us going, so, um. You gotta fight till the end. I think, like Coach said, we're competitors. We're gonna go till the end, and uh, that's just who we are. So. How we stall with Tacoma News Tribune, uh, Lindsay. Just to clarify, the an early quote you had, you said that. Uh, Sorry, I, I can't. I think they might have the best uh, front court ever. Just wanted to clarify if you meant uh, in the na if nation ever, back. Back 12 ever, and if you yeah. just talk about the two yeah. sisters. I mean, I'd love to actually engage someone in, in a debate with that. I mean, I'm literally I'm talking to my friends and stuff. Going, okay, let's go all the way back. I, I, some people have a better basketball history than I do, but you know, who did, 
who did Shaniqua play with at Tennessee, you know, and, and what was that combination like? Or even going back earlier to, you know, C Katrina McLean back in her day. But uh, Charmin and I were sitting at a high school recruiting event, and we saw Jennifer Azey, and, and we asked her. And she said, well, uh, Lisa Leslie and, and Katrina McLean were the, were the Olympic team hosts. And we said, that's the Olympic team. Uh, you know, I know Lisa Leslie and Tina Thompson played together. One was a senior, one was a freshman. You know, I'm just kind of throwing that out there. But, but I would love for someone to say, no, these two were better. And some of that is circumstance. Some of that is... Shanae and Neca play 40 minutes, you know, most games when needed, and, and, and because of the nature of their team, and they have good guards, but they play through the post, maybe that has something to do with it. You know, in other years, there's, you know, when you have Jane and, and um, you know, let's say Neca, when, when she's young, you, you also had Candice and other people. I mean, I just think the way that, that the performance, I mean, I'd like to look at numbers of other front courts. I just think they're really, really good. They're incredibly well coached. They're relied on, um, and, they've, and they've stepped up in those situations. You know, it's not the be all. My, my statement is not the be all and end all, but I, I just, I, it's fun to debate it and put it out there. Ving Wayne, Barry Insider. Um, this is for uh, coach and players. How does this tournament prepare you for the NCAA coming up? Oh. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, Tara says it all the time, like the, the Pac-12, you know, you know your opponents so well and it should prepare you for, you know, what you're going to face next. And I think we give them some challenges that make them better. And on the, on the flip side, I absolutely feel like the way we competed today um, should make us even more dangerous in that tournament, you know, next weekend than we were coming into this. Um, we're not often faced with that type of post play, a team that's so well prepared, uh, a team that, that, that plays really hard, and, and you want to rise each other up, raise each other up. And I, and I talked when I got the job about, um, you know, making Cal women's basketball one of the elite programs in the country. I think there's a lot of pieces that go into that. And I think we're on the cusp of that. And absolutely having Stanford in our backyard or across the bay is something that, that helps us both from a, a mental standpoint and a physical standpoint. If we bring this type of uh, intensity and focus against whoever we're matched up with, I think we can do some special things because Stanford poses problems for us that we have to deal with that makes us better. We'll take two more questions. Tom Fitzgerald, San Francisco Chronicle. Lindsay, I know you can't read the selection committee's minds, but how high a, a seat do you think you're going to get? Do I think we're going to get? Do I think we should get? Um, you know, right. Um, first of all, I mean, our RPI is in the 20s. Uh, I, I hope it still is after this. I haven't looked in, in a little while. Uh, and I think that, that the thing that's good about the women's committee is they watch a lot of film and they, um, and they do the eye test thing. And I think that, that we're a team that they should put, I don't know, six, seven. I, I mean, I, we want to be obviously off that eight, nine line um, because that's a, you know, harder to deal with. And I, and I think we've earned that. Really, I mean, I think we're, we've clearly set ourselves as the second best team in the Pac-12. Um, we, we've challenged some of the top, top teams. And, uh, and I, you know, we're going to be excited to go wherever. It's so much about matchups. I'm not going to, you know, be too upset about it if we're somewhere or a number that I didn't pick. But I think we've earned, um, you know, something in that mid-20s RPI kind of range. Hi, uh, Lewis Geist for Playmaker Mobile. And this question for you, Coach Gottlieb. The season isn't over, but you have a lot of young players on your team. How do you feel about your chances next year uh, in the conference and in the tournament? Yeah, I mean, we're really looking forward to next weekend. I think that, that we still can do some special things this year. And it's really neat to think that we have everybody coming back um, and we're only going to get better. Um, I think the sky is the limit for this group. They're so coachable. They want to be good. They're committed to, to Cal basketball. They're committed to each other. Um, and, and I think that... Uh, gosh, um, you know, what we can do it, it is really up to us, and that's a, a very, very fun prospect to, to have in our heads. We'll wrap it up. Thank you.